So the last time we saw Melania Trump was actually just a few days ago at the Al Smith dinner. Remember the dinner that Kamala skipped out on? Another scheduling conflict, I'm sure. But she was sitting there with Trump, laughing it up, having a great time at dinner and preparing herself, getting ready to be the first lady again. And she showed up at the Trump rally the other day at Madison Square Garden. You know, the one that's causing all this, this chaos, breaking the Internet, getting everybody worked up over the joke that Kill Tony told about Puerto Rico and Puerto Ricans. Yeah, um, that rally, the one with 20,000 people in attendance inside the building and another 75,000 outside who couldn't get in, but still wanted to show their support for the future 47th president of the United States of America. But Melania Trump showed up there, too. She came out and standing ovation, the crowd roars, the crowd cheers, and she takes the stage. And now... Please welcome our next Commander-in-Chief, my husband, President Donald J. Trump. Now, in addition to that, we saw another woman come out, Alina Haba, Trump's trusted legal defense attorney. And uh, it just looked like everybody was having a great time. And the polls show that Trump is going to be taking four swing states and winning the Electoral College. But it doesn't stop there because what happens next no one saw coming. Kamala's biggest podcast got 717,000 views in three weeks. Now, this is according to Patrick Bet David, CEO of Valuetainment. How many of you guys watch Valuetainment? Let me know in the comments. It seems like a pretty impressive number. Seems like 717,000 is a lot. Um, We've we've had some videos on this channel reach seven over seven hundred thousand views as well. So you know it's it's interesting, and what's also interesting is I forgot to mention that that podcast was the Call Her Daddy podcast. So I don't think there's a lot of like really, I don't think that it draws the attention of people who are truly interested in where this country is going over the next four plus years, as much as Donald Trump seems to connect on his podcasts and we were talking about how Joe Biden wouldn't have aligned well with who they set Kamala up with, who Obama set Kamala up with, especially now in this last ditch effort, Hail Mary attempt for media blitz and podcast blitz and bar blitz. She's doing a, a pub crawl with Gretchen Whitmer getting blackout drunk, drinking Guinness stout, I don't know what she drinks. Actually, Miller High Life, champagne and beers. That's what it is. But Trump's biggest podcast got 33 million views in only two days. And that was on Joe Rogan. Okay. Joe Rogan is also going to be recording a podcast with J.D. Vance tomorrow. So that should be equally as epic. Um, I like J.D. Vance. I really like J.D. Vance in the podcast setting. I like him like overall, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what this conversation is about and where it goes. And I got an update for you guys regarding Kamala and Joe Rogan and that experience or not. 717,000 views in three weeks versus 33 million views in two days. And you're telling me Kamala has a chance to win? <sighs> I think the people have already voted is what Patrick Bet David says. And I tend to agree, but the show's not over until the fat lady sings, right? President Trump has also uh, proposed no tax on overtime and no tax on Social Security. What do you think of those ideas? Yeah, well, he's making a lot of stuff up here, but also if you look further into his proposals, it moves way up. And we know that his no tax on tips will actually be used by things like hedge fund managers and folks that are moving people around on, on carried interest, trying to figure out a bait and switch on this. He did it last time. He'll do it again. This dude has perfected the hate 
towards Donald Trump, so much so that he hates on Donald Trump's idea of no tax on tips, a stance and policy that even Kamala Harris stole and copied from him that I guess Tim Walls is thinking, well, well, if Donald Trump doesn't tax your tips and he'll do something with, he'll do the, he'll do, he'll put the money in investments. But if we don't tax your tips, then we won't do that. We won't send it to hedge fund managers. We'll just send it to Ukraine. We'll send it to Lebanon. This guy's a complete freaking moron. Tim Walls just came out against President Trump's no tax on tips proposal. And this is odd, according to Paul Bubble Bath Girl at Bubble Bath Girl on X. This is odd considering Kamala Harris said she supports Trump's proposal. Kamala Walls can't keep their shit together. Yeah. Oh, man. This is actually kind of embarrassing. It's, it's like as we were watching the cognitive decline of Joe Biden happen in real time and seeing him just shrink and deteriorate and just be old as hell and just just not capable. We're seeing this campaign just die from within. And again, Tim Walls on his own is worse than Kamala on her own because he has no idea what their stance is. It's 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 all Trump bad, Trump bad, Trump bad. But wait, you guys wanted to do the same thing Trump was doing. Yeah, but, you know, he knows what a venture capitalist is. And, you know, we'll use big financial terms like hedge fund and investment and return or an ROI to make people set, make it people feel like it's a bad thing. Not also realizing that, hey, Democrats, <clears throat> um, heads up, guys, you you are actually the ones reaping the greatest benefit of the investment strategies of insider trading, uh, the likes of Nancy Pelosi would actually be us, you know, impressed by. If you want to know, uh, <laughs> they just released a full report on politicians trading. OK, and like every year since 2020, U.S. politicians have beat the market. But more importantly, topping the list here, Democrats. OK, Brian Higgins. Brian Higgins, top performer, net worth nearly $2 billion. Yeah. Tim, you, you can walk around talking all that noise all you want, but the numbers don't lie. I haven't said it before. I'll say it again. The numbers don't lie. Speaking of numbers, Kamala Harris appears to be calling it quits on North Carolina again, withdrawing nearly $2 million in campaign ads. Kamala Harris, media buying and analytics, is revising her broadcast flight from the 29th to Election Day, November 5th, in the contest for U.S. president. So far, we've seen 1.7, over 1.7 million, $1,721,302 to be exact, removed from the Charlotte, Greensboro, Greenville, Greenville, New Bern, Norfolk, Raleigh, and Wilmington markets. Seven of 54 previously active markets have been reported. They pulled the plug. They pulled the plug. Oh, yeah. More numbers. More numbers. These are shocking numbers because these numbers are supposed to remain hidden. They don't want people to know the truth. And Kamala's big podcast yesterday with Shay Shay, Shannon Sharp, not very many views, 32,000 likes. <laughs> Can you imagine if we allow people to vote on the next president through social media? You log into your account. Think about it. You could log into your account. You can only have one account, you know, and uh, your vote is calculated through your mobile device, through social media. She got 32,000 likes, which is relatively good. She got 73,000 dislikes. She nearly got two times more, actually more than two times more dislikes than she got likes. And this is another fail. And this is wow. This is crazy because you're not supposed to be able to see this. YouTube took away the dislike counter long ago, but there's some there's some back end uh, open source coding that can easily extract these numbers and pull this data. And this is terrible. This and if anybody knows, like if you know, you know, if you're a creator, you know, when a video gets a lot of dislikes, what it does to its reach. She she got none of that. Her and Shannon Sharp got none of that. 
So that means that it was truly disliked and YouTube's algorithm doesn't even want people to see it. Just like YouTube's algorithm is trying to hide and suppress Donald Trump's podcast with Joe Rogan because they don't want people to hear the truth and receive that message and have a greater understanding of who Donald Trump is. They're also equally suppressing and shadow banning this podcast with Shannon Sharp, Shay Shay and Kamala because they don't want people to see how bad Kamala is. Like, do you see how that works? And so Joe Rogan put up this post and he says that the Austin, Texas podcast or let her walk asking thoughts, opinions. Should Joe Rogan, should he bend a knee for Kamala, go to her and also only do one hour? Like, should he really do that? We all know what happened with Brett Baer and Fox News. Now, granted, it wasn't a podcast. This is a completely different setup. But we also know that she stalled. They were icing the kicker. They were trying to make it so that whatever time they had was actually going to be less time for her to stick her foot in her mouth as so she did. Maybe if she wasn't late and she didn't put Brett in that situation, maybe things would have gone differently. But in my opinion, Joe, don't waste your time. Uh, I would not go to her. I would not restrict it to one hour. I would say, look, if you're if you want the same opportunities as Trump or J.D. Vance or whoever, then just do the same things that they're doing. Show up here. Let's sit down. Let's talk. Let's see how long it ends up being. That's it. But Kamala tells Joe podcast demands and it says also, for the record, the Harris campaign has not passed on doing the podcast. They offered a date for Tuesday, but I would have had to travel to her and they only wanted to do an hour. I strongly feel the best way to do it is in the studio in Austin. My sincere wish is to just have a nice conversation and get to know her as a human being. I really hope we can make it happen. But I don't know if I would really consider Kamala to be like a human being. You know, she's not like an alien. I don't think maybe she's a skinwalker. I don't know, but she's just not like normal. She's not like chill, cool, just easily relatable. And I don't think that the podcast would last three hours because I don't think Joe Rogan would want to sit there for three hours after having gotten through the first hour, you know, but that's just me. My thoughts, my opinions, take it for what it's worth. Donald Trump, he held a, an emergency press conference this morning at Mar-a-Lago. And this video here, I want to show you guys. I don't know if you saw it. I don't know if you caught it. But this video here is probably going to be another tool used by the media and by Kamala and her campaign to try and spread this rhetoric and these lies that Donald Trump is talking. Did you hear him talking about the enemy from within? The enemy from within? Give me a freaking break. So today... I'm announcing that for the first time under my administration, we will be seizing the assets of the criminal gangs and drug cartels. And we will use those assets to create a compensation fund to provide restitution for the victims of migrant crime, and the government will help in the restoration. The government will help in the restitution. Breaking. Trump announces that his administration will seize the assets of criminal gangs and drug cartels and use them to set up a compensation fund for the victims of migrant crime. So these enemies exist in this country. These enemies are within the United States of America. These are the enemies from within. These are uh, a sampling, an example of enemies from within. And he's going to he's, he's going to take care of them. He's going to take care of him. He said he's going to make this. He said we want to get back to the golden era very, very quickly. Good morning, guys. Former President Donald Trump will deliver remarks to the press at Mar-a-Lago this morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Then tonight, Trump is holding a rally in Allentown, Pennsylvania. The city has the second largest Latino population in the battleground state. The former president campaigned in battleground Georgia yesterday, sharing a hopeful message to voters. I'm asking you to dream big again, and this will be America's new golden age. We're going to have a golden age, and hard to believe after the four years, almost four years of what we've gone through. It's hard to believe I could even say that. Some people would say, he's got to be crazy. No, we're going to have a golden age. It's going to happen fast. Like if you agree.
let me know. Let me know and let YouTube know that you enjoy these videos. Hit that thumbs up. I really would appreciate it. Um, speaking of enemy from within, <laughs> this one is actually kind of funny, kind of shocking that it's actually coming to fruition and being sh and being shared, but not unexpected. Veteran Democrat strategist James Carville is telling campaign advisors and high level donors behind the scenes that Kamala Harris is headed for a historic blowout, telling them she will lose every swing state and probably New Hampshire and Virginia, too. And, you know, he is all for Kamala, but he's also not lying. He's telling the truth. He's calling it like he sees it. And whether it's James Carville or the view count on podcasts on YouTube and Spotify, I think it's pretty simple, pretty easy. Clearly, I, you know, America has spoken. America has voted. Today, Vice President Kamala Harris will not be visiting a battleground state after campaigning in Michigan yesterday. Instead, she will deliver her campaign's closing arguments at the Ellipse in Washington, D.C. The vice president remaining optimistic even after recent polls show her losing momentum. Do you feel like the race is slipping away? I do not. And actually, and I agree with you. I think certainly polling is a measure, but to be frank, if I would listened to polls, I would have never run for my first or second office. <laughs> I wouldn't be here talking with you. And um, what I am seeing are in, in states such as South Carolina, I mean, North Carolina, Georgia, historic turnout, historic turnout. With just one week until Election Day, the United States is seeing historic early voter turnout across the country, with more than 46 million Americans having already cast their ballots. Today, Democrat vice presidential nominee Tim Walz and former First Lady Michelle Obama will both be campaigning on behalf of Harris in Georgia. And uh, we just got seven more days for the numbers to come in. And uh, Kamala Harris, can she can take a hike. She can She can go on vacation. She can... She can go apply and work at McDonald's. I don't know what she's going to do. She just get the hell out of here. You ain't got to go home. You just got to get the hell out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that thumbs up. Share this video. Oh, and then watch these videos here, too. Watch these next. Watch either one. Actually, watch both of these. I made them. They're good. All right, bye.